Okay, hi everyone. I'm Joe Birkinshaw. Um, I work with Spark Geo, um, a consulting company, provide geospatial expertise to a wide range of organizations. Um, I'm more of a geospatial developer, so that can mean a lot of things depending on the day. I'm usually doing a lot of coding, um, developing web map applications, um, working with geographic data, and various image resources as well. Um, Spark Geo started in Prince George, but we're mostly a distributed team now, so it's pretty standard for me to be home alone most days, so this isn't really my normal Friday. Um, yeah, today I'm actually going to be talking something a little different from what I do day to day anyway. Um, I'm going to talk about some terrain mapping that I've been doing for a trail map of um, Squamish, where I live. Um, yeah, so there, there it is, kind of north of Vancouver, south of Whistler. Um, it's a great place, there's lots of outdoor adventure opportunities there, great hiking, mountain biking, rock climbing, all that kind of stuff. Um, the hills in the background are just covered in trails. Um, a friend of mine um, had published a map in the past, he didn't make it, but he was kind of into publishing, and he wanted to make a new version of this, showing all the new kind of trails and just make one that look nicer and he kind of spoke to me about it and I sounded, I, it sounded good. I thought it would be a good thing to do as a personal side project, so I just kind of jumped into it. Um, I've made maps quite a bit in the past, um, I've always been into cartography, but that's not really been my focus in my career in recent years, I've been more software development focused. Um, but in my mind I had a good idea of um, what I thought looked good and how I built to achieve that um, with the knowledge that I had. I um, thought it would be fairly straightforward, but <laughs> what followed was uh, what, <laughs> a project. Um, I'm not sure if people are familiar with this, but I'm sure you can relate. Um, I was obviously at the this is the best idea ever stage. And then I kind of progressed and uh, decided I thought it's going to take some work. This sucks and it's boring. Yeah. Now my favorite stage, the dark night of the soul. <laughs> and then things look up again. Um, we were on quite a tight budget, but we had access to some GPS data of the trails we wanted to map. And um, we were going to supplement that with elevation data, some open street map data, and just use free and open source software um, whenever possible, really. Um, so it seems simple enough. Um, for the terrain part, I thought I'd just grab some free elevation data, generate some hill shade, throw in a bit of color, and it were good. Um, but it was, what followed was kind of like a humbling journey where I found out how tricky it could be to do it well. And um, I thought it would take a few hours and it took me much, much longer. Um, so I learned a lot about the tools, the processes, and the data required to do that. And uh, that's kind of what I want to share today. Um, it's probably won't be as scientific as some of the other talks. I'll try and keep it light, but hopefully there'll be something you can take away from it. So, shaded relief, hill shading. I'm not going to spend much time defining this because I'm sure everyone here knows what that is. Um, but these examples here are old ones, probably <coughs> hand drawn. Um, I'm not too great with a pencil or anything like that, so I wanted to do it digitally. Um, so the first thing I needed was some elevation data. Um, the quality of the data is important, especially at the scale we were working at. We wanted to create a map that was about 1 to 30,000 and it would be about 29 by 22 inches. Um, a few options, ASTA, SRTM. What really appealed to me was this MapZen Terrain Tiles API, which also changed to NextZen because it kind of closed down, it might be MapZen again, I don't know. Um, but I really like that because you can kind of specify the bounds, the um, level of detail, like the zoom level and things like that. And, um, pull these tiles down, stitch them back together, and do it in a scripted way. And being a programmer, that kind of lazy approach makes it reproducible, and that appeals to me a lot. So I kind of, oh yeah, and there's also the trim data from the BC government 
but I'll talk about that later. So I went ahead with this approach at first. Um, I used GDAL, the command line tool, underpins most geospatial software. Um, just use, use it from the command line again, reproducible. Um, and this was the first thing that I got. So this is about 37 kilometers from top to bottom. Um, <coughs> so much is kind of in the valley bottom there, and most of the trails are on the initial hills just off to the east. Um, yeah, so this area here, the storm is chief. Everyone calls it the chief locally. Um, big piece of rock, it's about 600 meters high, two kilometers long, it's covered in rock climbing roots and loads of trails. So, zoom into this a little bit. And, uh, it's kind of blocky and has a harsh appearance. You can see things, but it doesn't look great. So this is where I got to. Okay, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> so my next question was, how can I take the data I have and make it look smoother? And then around about this time, I saw this tweet by Tom Patterson. I'm sure, a lot of people know who he is. He's a retired National Park Service cartographer from the U.S ex-president of Natus. Uh, he's done loads of amazing work focused on shaded relief and he's got a great website which is an excellent resource for that. But he talks about this terrain sculptor tool here. Um, and you can use it for generalizing DEMs for shaded relief. Um, it removes the irrelevant terrain detail and accentuates important terrain features. On the side there's a bunch of other cool tools as well that I haven't really spent much time investigating. It's screen paint along, it sounds cool to me, but I haven't really put much time into that. Um, so I used the terrain sculpt tool, put the same data in, created a new hill shape, and that's what I got on the right there. So I think it's an improvement. So I took that, put it into QGIS. QGIS, I don't know. <laughs> who, who calls it QGIS? Everybody but you, Joe. <laughs> QGIS. QGIS? Yeah. I don't know, I've heard people say that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, so I put it in with, with the elevation data and applied a call around to that. And it just kind of gave this old school kind of looking map there. Not great for what we wanted to show, really, I didn't think. Um, and yeah, there, there are a couple of local mountains on there. Um, they're big, steep, tall, rugged, and I don't really think it shows that that well in what we've got here. Um, another thing I did at this stage, so I took some open street map data, um, some contours, trails, peaks, things like that, and um, land cover, put that in, and I thought that was looking pretty good at this point on my laptop, and printed it out, because this is a paper map we're making, right? Um, printed it out and it just didn't look that good. It just looked kind of flat and too smoothed out and was pretty disappointed. So I think at this point I was probably getting to, I thought I was getting to my dark night with the soul. <laughs> a, couple, a couple of things changed. Um, I realized that the trim DEM from the BC government was better for the scale I was working at. Not ideal, I'd love it, a load of wide out data, but that wasn't available to me. Um, so I switched to that and I started to see more and more people using a tool called Blender. So um, here are a few people, well known people using it. Um, this guy Scott Reinhardt is taking vintage maps and creating hillshade that way in Blender and overlaying them and creating some pretty cool things. But Basically, it's an open source 3D modeling software that renders realistic lighting and shadows. Um, people use it for CGI and animations and a whole bunch of other things. And it, it's supposed to simulate how light works in real life. Um, it's a pretty complicated application. Luckily, there are some great tutorials online. Daniel Huffman and Morgan, who's actually up next here, I didn't need to a couple of days ago. Um, he's got a good one. I worked through those and kind of came up with something that a combination of that, those that I thought would work for me. Got it all set up, got my data in there, got all the settings right, um, set it off, 
my laptop's kind of just howling away in the corner for a weekend, the best part of two days. And uh, eventually finished, and I went back to it, and yeah, this, this is what I had. A big parade, nothing. So I got something wrong, and that, this was the dad night of the song. Um, I, I don't know, I gave it a few days or maybe a few weeks, I don't know, something like that. And I came back to it and um, set it up again, wait a few days, and I ended up with this. Um, so you, you're supposed to be able to see how the peaks cast shadows and the shadowed areas are lit by scattered light from nearby you know, reflections and things like that. Um, comparing that to what I had in the past, I think it's a positive change. Um, <clears throat> going back into the chief example, there's the difference in you on the right with the different data and the blender approach. Um, another thing I found online while I was on the same site of this guy, um, he also has a great terrain in Photoshop tutorial. Now I don't have, have access to Photoshop, but I realized that in QGIS I could um, I could replicate a lot of these things, so using blending modes to combine different layers, and um, what else was it? There's a, using um, levels adjustment with histograms. So what he does is he takes the original pill shade, creates a shadows layer and a highlights layer, and then combines them instead of just using the original. Also, um, texture and land cover. Now, I couldn't really find a great source for land cover. I tried a few things, but it didn't work that well, so I just kind of abandoned that. I'll probably come back to it at some point. <laughs> um, and texture, I didn't really know how to do that, but it turns out there's a great tool, terrain texture shader out there. Um, it's a command line tool, again, makes it nice and reproducible for me. Um, it's well documented. I think it's, yeah, it's really it's on GitHub. Um, so I used that and generated this. Um, next attempt. So this is just kind of quickly to show you how I used QJS, the histogram to create my shadows and highlights. Um, I used a call ramp here for the elevation, and then these blend modes, a combination of screen, burn, and multiply. If you don't work around in the symbology settings, you'll find those. Um, this is what I had, which was much better. Um, I liked it. Kind of just, this was a side project, so I didn't work it for a while. And um, over time, I started seeing people talking about this um, Imhoff style. This guy, John Nelson, who's at Esri, he's a cartographer and database guy. Um, let's see if this works. Um, there's this great post where he talks about this guy, Edward M. Imhoff, who kind of like the godfather of a lot of the shaded relief stuff. Um, some really cool hand-drawn things, and he recreates it in ArcGIS Pro, and also gives away all the tricks of the trade along the way. So I wanted to recreate that in QGIS. Um, but lucky for me, <laughs> Somebody had already done that and put all the style files <laughs> online. <laughs> so I had to go with that. Um, this is what I got. Kind of different, kind of cool, but not. It, it wouldn't really work for the kind of trail map we were trying to do. But it was a good process, and a few things I took from it. One important thing was this imagery base here. <coughs> so he used an imagery base. I got a Sentinel 2 image to do this, so it's free and easy to download. Um, yeah, so I thought I could take that and apply it, put it into my previous map that I showed you. Um, so, to combine it all, I took this Sentinel-2 base, um, kind of faded it so it wasn't too overpowering, um, added in a color ramp on the elevation, um, created my shadows and applied a bit of color to that as well. So that's from the blender hill shade that I created. Um, highlights, 
played a bit of color to that as well. And this is all in QGIS with the blend modes and uh, playing with the histograms and other settings in there. Um, this is a personal touch, just a thin transparent shaded relief to add a bit more darkness to it. Um, my texture, that's kind of a subtle thing change, but makes a difference. Um, some contours, I don't know if you can see those, uh, where they are, 50 meter contours. Um, some vector data um, from OpenStreetMap and various other places. Um, and that's kind of where it's at. I added a bunch of trail data that's not on here. There's more work to do on the symbology and, and uh, labeling and things like that. And this is a pretty big map, I think. Yeah, this image isn't as high resolution as it could be, but when it's printed, you can kind of see everything and read everything. I think it shows off a lot of good things. So, um, I think I passed that it will be good to finish because I'll learn something for next time. I think I've learned a lot. Not quite a, it's done and it sucks. Hopefully it won't suck. <laughs> There's a little bit more work to do. Um, so yeah, but things I did learn, um, where are we going here? I just found it was really hard to get a paper map to look good, even if they look great on my monitor. They didn't work so great when I printed them. So that was something I wasn't that familiar with because I hadn't really made many paper maps in the past. Um, also coming from a web map, mapping background, you've got all the zoom levels, you can zoom in and out. Um, show different amounts of detail depending on where you are. Um, you can't have that with a paper map. Also, there are just a lot more tools out there than the regular, obvious GIS tool choices. Um, so, I don't know, I it's good to get familiar with those things, so you have them in your, up your sleeve for next time you need something like that. And also, there's just a great community of people out there who, like cartographers and other people, who do really good work and share it. So it's good to utilize that and give back to it when you can. And also, um, Data quality is just obviously really important, but that goes without saying. Um, so yeah, these things I learned. I also applied them to the blog post of work that myself, Darren, and some other people worked on about um, Sasquatch sightings and, and finding Sasquatch using satellite imagery in this local area. So I created this pretty much using all the same methods, just different <laughs> settings. Um, yeah, so you can see. These are reports. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. That's